All right, so here's the uh, STM32 uh, F401RE Nucleo board. Kind of some development board porn for you. Ten whole dollars can get you one of these. Um, a cool feature I'd like to highlight is uh, on the Morpho, so-called Morpho headers, the adjacent pin on the Arduino headers are tied together, so you can have a shield hooked up to this thing and you can still use your logic analyzer or whatever to probe on those pins. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the beefs I have with it is it's not totally compatible with Arduino stuff. Like the I squared C on the bottom left isn't there. And one of the first things I did was try to hook up I squared C on that bottom left with an Arduino shield. And it didn't work so I had to flip the flip the header pins over to the top of the board and then jump her across to the top right where they have another I squared C on this thing. There's an SCL and SDA there. I don't know if you can see it on the video. But um, it probably makes sense why they did that. The analog end pins are probably way more popular than I squared C. And they probably didn't have uh, a couple of pins on the uh, on the microcontroller there that uh, shared an ADC and an I squared C channel. So that's probably why they left it off the analog in side. But pretty much every Arduino board that has I squared C I think is probably going to use that one because it's the one that's on every Arduino. So that's kind of a bummer. It's kind of frustrating that I had to go do that. I don't have a soldering iron here so I had to do some driving to do that. So. But uh, other than that, pretty cool. I'll show you my first project with it here in a second. And another really cool thing about the uh, Nucleo boards is they're embed enabled. And I, I never really messed with embed, um, but uh, it's a really, really cool compiler that uh, is loaded like in your browser so you don't have to install anything on your computer to run it. You can run it from any computer that has USB and the internet basically. And so, uh, you know, you can you can have a bunch of different programs going at the same time, and and uh, in in terms of coding, it's a little bit like the Arduino, so it's like a simplified version of uh, embedded programming, which I'm not a huge fan of. One of the problems I have with it is uh, you can't set breakpoints and watch expressions, so debugging is kind of a pain. You have to write everything out to a terminal, you know, and 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 that's uh, not my favorite method of debugging. But uh, since it's simplified, I was able to get a lot more done in a couple days than I probably would have gotten done with KuCox or, or an actual C compiler. So I made up a little digital delay pedal with the uh, Nucleo board and a codec board, and uh, I'll demo that for you in just a second. So this is the codec shield on the Nucleo board, and uh, I'll just demo the delay really quick. I've got the uh, synthesizer coming in and uh, the uh, delay going out straight to the sound card and uh, it, it both stereo channels work um, but right now it's only mono but anyways so right now it's pretty dry little feedback and a short delay time it's pretty much real time it's all wet going through so I'll turn up the feedback and then turn up the delay time.
So, kind of a simple little delay pedal. It's almost in the form factor of a guitar pedal, so it's kind of cool. I don't know. But. So, a couple of quick additional thoughts I forgot to mention. Um, I got this board mostly to do a DSP development with. Uh, you know, not serious DSP, but just kind of hobby audio stuff that I do at home. One of the most attractive features of the uh, F401 and F411 chips is they have about uh, 100 kilobytes of SRAM built right into the chip, which is a whole lot of memory compared to most microcontrollers. And uh, that little delay I just showed you used the full amount of SRAM in the chip, so that was a 44 kilohertz sampling frequency and only mono, so don't expect super long delay times out of this thing or sampling times or whatever you want to do with it. But uh, it also has a floating point processor and I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh, the codec I used, it uh, takes and receives signed integers and it took me a while to figure out how to convert those to floats so I can do all kinds of arbitrary floating point math on my signals. Uh, so what I had to do there was I had to take the uh, signed integer and convert it into unsigned with you know just some simple algorithms right there and then uh, the variable that uh, that algorithm spits out is uh, declared also as an unsigned integer you can't just declare it as an int it took me a while to figure that out and then uh, and then I just convert it to a float right here I'm storing the uh, unsigned integer into a float value and then and then you're free to go. It's uh, you can multiply by 4.293654 and divide by 0.75382, and it'll it'll work, and it won't take forever because this thing's got a built-in floating point arithmetic unit. Um, and then uh, of course I had to convert back into signed integer before I uh, spit the thing back out to the uh, codex. So I think that's what this is right there. But uh, anyways, some uh, pretty cool little board. I like it a lot. I like embed. It's a really cool way to make code. Maybe not the most pro level, but if you're fooling around at home, it could be a really great scra scratch pad. So anyways, let's do, the, do the Star Wars. It looks like a spaceship. <laughs>